Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the Foster versus Concisal breakdown and prediction video. As Oshaki Foster, the reigning WBC um, super featherweight champion of the world at 130 pounds returns to make his third title defense against former three-time world title challenger Brazilian contender Robson Concisa. Now before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel, I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. Now, if you don't know about this fight, then I'm sorry, you're not a big box, you're not really a, a big boxing fan. This is a boxing fan's fight right here. Um, this, this fight's taking place on Saturday, July 6th as the co-feature to Shakur Stevenson and um, Artem Hardarunyan. Now, this is the second consecutive Shakur Stevenson fight that I'm more interested in the co-feature than I am the main event. Last year, um, when Stevenson fought De Los Santos, was looking forward to that one, but I cared more about the Navarrete and Concisao fight that was the co-feature. Now Concisao is the co-feature again for Stevenson, and he's taking on the reigning WBC champion, Oshaki Foster. And I love this fight right here. Now, if you haven't seen my breakdown videos before, what we do is we discuss the fight, what it means, what's at stake, then we get into each fighter individually in a championship fight like this. I would, I'll talk about the champion first and then I talk about the challenger second. I ask the same questions on both sides. I fully break down the fight and then I give, uh, at the very end, we have a couple final thoughts and final questions, including my prediction. So, um, again, this is a boxing fans fight right here. It should be. You have two guys that are fighting in a big fight right here at 130 pounds. If you cannot respect that, you're not a real fucking fan. Oshaki Foster and Robson Concisao, I was super excited when this fight got announced. Um, you know, these guys coming in, they're not just fighting for the WBC title. These guys are fighting to get a big fight to sit at the top of 130. Right now, Emmanuel Navarrete is the top of 130 if he decides to stay there. He's still the WBO champion, but he moved up to lightweight and lost to Dennis Berianchek, attempting to become the lightweight champ. If he is serious about staying, uh, if he wants to move back down to 130 where he's still champ, a rematch with Oscar Valdez is on the table where Navarrete, could, uh, you know, won that decisively last year. Um, and then the winner of that, I think, is going to fight the winner of this right here at some point between Foster and Concisa. And these two guys are uh, at a pinnacle right here. Both of them are. This is a fight they have to win in order to secure those big fights, right? You know, that big showdown and to secure the top of the division. Because for both guys, even if Navarrete does not move back down to 130, then Oscar Valdez is upgraded to WBO champion and the winner of this fight would be in line to fight Valdez. Foster, that would be a huge fight for him. And for Concisao, he already fought Valdez back in 2021. And, you know, in my opinion, was robbed in that fight. You know, uh, well, robbed is a strong word. I thought he won that fight for sure. I gave him that fight and the judges scored it for Valdez. So now uh, these two guys are gonna clash to move to the top of the ladder at 130. This is a huge fight for both guys right here. Now, let's start with the champion, Oshaki Foster, and we look at what he's done coming into this fight. As we always do, we look at the last three fights for, for the fighter coming in and Foster's been very active. His last three fights date back to February of last year, 2023, where he scored the biggest win of his career, upsetting and winning the vacant WBC title with a convincing 12 round unanimous decision over uh, the then undefeated and current featherweight champion, Ray Vargas. That was a fight where I actually picked Foster to win 
and and most people were picking Vargas to win, and Foster outgunned and outclassed, um, uh, outworked Ray Vargas to a unanimous decision to secure the title. He returned in October to take on Eduardo, uh, or Rocky Hernandez, and surprisingly was losing majority of that fight heading into the late rounds. Then, I believe it was round 10, he badly hurt Hernandez, who was well ahead on the cards, and almost knocked him out. He kind of punched himself out as Hernandez uh, rallied a little bit in the 11th, but he stayed in, in, in the game, got his feet back under him, and well behind on the cards, he went after a tired Hernandez in the 12th round and finished him with less than a minute left. Actually, it might have been less than 30 seconds left in the fight. Um, but it's a fight that if it would have made the final bell, he would have lost to Rocky Hernandez and lost the WBC title. So it was a great rally to retain his world title. Then in February of this year, he took on um, Abraham Supernova. And another fight where I told everybody, don't be surprised if this fight is close because Nova was is a very good fighter. And Nova gave, uh, gave Foster hell. Foster did score a knockdown in this fight that helped. And he went on to win a close split decision over Nova to retain the title again. So Foster has, since winning his title last year, has been, you know, has been very active and very good, uh, quote unquote. But he's also lost quite a bit of rounds in that time frame. And he's been on the verge of losing. So heading into this fight, I think he's hungry. I think he really wants to prove himself um, and leave no doubt what he wants. And I think he knows what's at stake. So I think Foster is ready to go in this fight and he's definitely hungry. Now, what kind of fight does Foster need to have in order to beat Robson Concise out? It's not gonna be easy. It really isn't. Um, because part of me says he should box and the other part of me says he should fight and I think he's gonna fight but I think he's gonna more incorporate in this one uh, his somewhat of the style that he incorporated against Ray Vargas where he boxed and punched and maybe let Vargas attack but that's the thing Concise Al is a good pure boxer as well he's more of a boxer than he is a puncher so Concise Al is going, it's, it's going to be somewhat of a chess match, but I think with a lot of action. But Foster needs to be ready to go. He needs to not be overlooking the older Concise out, and he needs to use his jab. He has a two-inch reach advantage. Now, he's given up two inches in height, but he has the longer arms. He needs to jab, and he needs to stop any kind of progression that Concise out has by jabbing. And, and I think a jab could be the key for Oshaki Foster in this fight. Now, can Oshaki Foster win this fight by knockout? I'm not saying that he can't, but I'm leaning against it. I don't think a knockout is likely for Foster against Concisao. Concisao has packed a good chin. Um, Shakur Stevenson, uh, um, Emmanuel Navarrete, Oscar Valdez, I think they're more power punchers than, than Foster and none of them were able to knock uh, uh, Concise out. I don't think Foster's gonna knock him out. Now, can Foster win a decision? Yes, I do believe he can win a decision. Um, I think he might be able to secure like a 116, 112 type decision, but I also believe, more of me believe that the fight is gonna be close if it goes to the scorecard. So it's gonna be interesting to see but I do believe he can win a decision. Now, what's more likely for Foster, a knockout or a decision? Well, I think after my answers, you see that it's more likely Foster beats Concise out by a decision than a knockout. So that's where I stand on that. Now, what does a win mean for El Shaki Foster? A win means everything, it really does. Um, not only does he continue on as the world champion, but he puts himself in line for a unification bout against Oscar Valdez, against Emmanuel Navarrete, somebody. And now unification leads to undisputed. It's been a big thing on a lot of people's mind. And where, you know, where we stand with Turkey Al Alashik getting, um, 
getting involved in the in the sport of boxing, uh, bringing the you know the the guys together to cross the street and fight on one big platform. I I think Foster needs to is going to look at this as an audition for those big cards and those big fights, and I think he's going to try um, to really give it his all to win this fight. He, he needs to definitely not overlook Conciso, but. A win means a lot for him because it's going to lead to much bigger things. Now, what does a loss mean for Foster? I think any kind of loss is going to devastate Oshaki Foster. He's not a big name. And um, he needs that world title to set up those bigger fights to try to secure himself, you know, and, and his future. And a loss right here would really devastate him. Any kind of loss, even a close loss. I think would devastate Oshaki Foster because he'd have to start all over and jump back into the mix. And with him not being a huge name, that's not an easy thing to do. Now, now um, we switch over to the challenger, the former three-time world title challenger, Robson Concisao. So Concisao, his last three fights date back to last year as well. He fought a Nicholas Polanco, um, he was actually returning from the unanimous decision loss to Shakur Stevenson in the fight where he challenged for the unified title uh, at 130, the vacant titles. Um, Stevenson came in overweight. He soundly outboxed and outclassed um, Kwonsai Sal to the unanimous decision, but technically he was overweight. Um, now, then uh, again, he fought Polanco, I think a cut. Uh, stopped the fight after only two rounds that he was winning and um, the fight was declared a no contest. He then returned in November of last year and got a, a chance to, to challenge for a championship for his third time against Emmanuel Navarrete. And most people thought after Navarrete dominated Oscar Valdez and had already fought and won the world title earlier in the year knocking out Liam Wilson, most people thought Navarrete was going to beat Concisa because he's a more elite fighter. And, you know, Concisa might have fought the best fight of his career, in my opinion, against Imanu Navarrete. He went out there and not only potentially deserved a decision, he, out, he outworked and out-hustled a younger um, fighter in Navarrete. Now, I'm going to be honest. I think Navarrete um, was burnt out after the fight with Valdez. He returned after only three months off, you know, to take on a guy like Concisao. And Navarrete threw over a thousand punches against Oscar Valdez. And he was also in a war in a really competitive fight against Liam Wilson earlier in the year in February. So he was fighting for his third time in nine months when he fought Concisao in November. And I and I think he was overlooking Concisao as well because Concisao, because uh, Navarrete had his, uh, the, the rumors were already there. He had already filed for super champion status to be able to move up to 135 and challenge for the WBO title there against Baryanchik. So I think everybody was already projecting Concisao and Lomachenko at some point and I think Navarrete was looking to the future, and I think he was burnt out and um, overworked. And I, that's part of the reason that Concisa was able to do what he did. But he he performed fantastically against against him. He took a couple knockdowns and made the fight closer, and the fight was declared a draw at the end of the day. But Concisa coming in, oh, and, and then that led to his last fight uh, a couple months ago against, um, I don't even remember the guy's name, he went out there and destroyed that guy. And that's what you're supposed to do against a guy where you don't know their names. They're not that, that you know, they're they're a gimme opponent. You're supposed to destroy a guy like that. And he broke down that guy and stopped him impressively and left his name still on everybody's tongue. And that's what has gotten him back to a world title fight because he's not a mandatory challenger. This was a fight um, where he is being given a shot because Bob Aaron wanted to put the fight together and he's a solid enough name, but is a fourth time a charm for 
couldn't side sell is the big question. Whether it is or it isn't, he is hungry as fuck, and he finally wants to be a world champion. This is his fourth chance. Valdez, I think he beat Oscar Valdez that night. Shakur Stevenson, I think Stevenson would have beat him no matter what, but Stevenson came in overweight. So you can't sit there and just fully say that that wasn't an advantage for Shakur Stevenson. And then the fight with Navarrete, I absolutely believe he outworked Navarrete, but those couple knockdowns, that fight could have been a draw because of that. It depends on how you scored the fight. It was, I, I mean, I thought he won seven, I, I thought he won eight or nine rounds, to be honest. But you take away two points because of knockdowns, and that could make it, if it's eight to four, that makes it a draw. So, you know, it was, it was, uh, I think he outworked the number one fighter, but now he's going into this fight against a guy who I don't believe is the number one fighter in, in, in the division after fighting the number one guy three times for world titles. So is this an easier fight for Concise I don't know if easy is the right word. I think it's a more winnable fight. That's where I kind of land on that. But we'll see. Is a four time a charm. He's definitely fucking hungry for it. Now, uh, can or what kind of style does he need to have to win this fight? And I think Concisao needs to work. He needs to be in great condition like he was for Navarrete. And I think he needs to uh, frustrate Foster by boxing and going after him. Um, Foster's not a big knockout guy. I think he needs to capitalize on that by coming at Foster, but also making Foster come to him and stand in the middle of the ring. And let's see who's faster. Let's see who's the better boxer. Let's see who hits harder. I think Concisao needs to be the one to try to dictate that with Foster. If he does that, I think he can win. I absolutely think he needs to look at the new, the Nova fight, the Super Nova fight, and see what Nova did to have success. Because I think he somewhat has a similar style to Abraham Supernova. And then, I also think he needs to look at the Ray Vargas fight and see the mistakes that Vargas made that cost him that fight. He can do that. I think he can win. He could potentially win this fight. Now... He does have a two inch height advantage, so I think he needs to use that um, as well. Use the height advantage, try to jab from the outside and box as well and set things up. Now, can Concise out win this fight by knockout? I, it's it's almost the same thing as Foster, my answer. I'm not saying it's completely out of, you know, he doesn't, he can't knock him out, but I think it's way more on the less likely side. Small percentage he wins this fight by knockout, in my opinion. Can Concise out win this fight by a decision? Absolutely, I think he can. Uh, it, but it's the same kind of question, or same kind of answer as the Foster answer, which I think he can win a comfortable decision, um, like eight rounds to four. But I also think, uh, in my eyes, that this fight could definitely be close. Now, what is more likely for Concise out, a knockout or a decision? I think I answered that, but. I'll make it clear, a decision, in my opinion, it's more likely if Concise out beats Foster. Now, can uh, what does a win mean for Robson Concise out here? A win means everything. He finally becomes a world champion. And and that's huge in itself. At 35 years old, this is a, a win in a fight that he needs. He finally becomes world champ. It would be huge for his career um, just for the moment. But also, it gets him a rematch with somebody. He wants Navarrete. He wants Valdez. I think he's hungry. I think those are two fights that absolutely you can argue that he won both of those fights. I think he wants to run it back with both guys, at the very least one of them. And I think this opens the door for that, a victory over Foster, and can open the door to other things. So a win is is absolute uh, for, for Concise out. A win is huge. Now, what does a loss mean for Concise out? Depending on how he loses, even if he loses a close fight, though, it's going to be a tough one. It, it, it might, you know, he might fall into gatekeeper mode or into even worse, this guy's too good for me to take a risk against him. That's how some of the other fighters might look at him, even though he's 35. If he loses this fight by a close decision, I think that's, that might be how he's viewed. 
But if he loses by a close decision, he's pushed back into that back of the top 10 type area of like a Rocky Hernandez and a um, Abraham Supernova where he's gonna have to start over. Now, don't get me wrong, he has plenty of options. A gatekeeper's not a bad role. He could still be considered a contender, even with a, a close loss. But a loss hurts because this will be his fourth time going after a world title, and he would be unsuccessful. And that would, I, I do believe that would hurt him right there, it would. So I think the next time he would get a shot, it would have to be a mandatory shot, not a, oh, hey, Robson Gonzalez is a good fighter. I want to give him a crack at this. I don't think he sees that again if he loses this fight to Foster. Now, um, so a loss really would hurt him. So now the final two things. First, is it better for boxing if Oshaki Foster wins this fight or if Robson Gonzalez wins this fight? And to be honest, I don't have an answer for you. That's the truth. I think it could be good for boxing on both sides, and that's really my answer. And that's the first time you're hearing me say that across the board. I think whoever wins this fight, it's good for boxing. I'll tell you why. Because it's such an evenly based fight, and these guys really are, are, are at a crossroads, it's a must-win situation in order to build their resumes looking forward. Like Oshaki Foster, you could say, hey, we really don't know how good this guy is. He's a fresh, he's fresher blood at 30, and he'd be in line for the winner of Navarrete Valdez setting up new fights, which was which would be fine and good. But Consaisal, a victory for him, securing his first world title is a great story. He does not fight like a 35-year-old fighter, and he gets into a rematch with two guys, one to two guys that people argue, uh, really do argue that he beat. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, I absolutely believe he beat Oscar Valdez. I thought he completely outclassed him in the first seven rounds. I thought Valdez closed the, the fight strong, but there were some swing rounds in there that could have went either way in the back half of the fight. I think he won at least seven rounds against Valdez, clearly. So I absolutely believe he won that fight. And then the fight with Navarrete, I thought he won eight to nine rounds. Those two knockdowns killed him right there. So this guy is very good. And um, and he doesn't fight like a 35-year-old fighter. And if he secures a win, it's a great story for boxing. And, and it's good for him because it leads to good rematches, which is good for boxing as well. So uh, against more established guys like Navarrete and Valdez. So it's fun. It's good. It leads to unifications, potentially undisputed. So I really think this is 50-50. I think it's good for boxing if either guy wins this fight. I really do. Now, <laughs> my final prediction. This is as close to a 50-50 fight as you can get. Um, I really believe that this fight can go either way. I could see Foster, the youth, and and the ability, you know, maybe the talent level. I think he could he could outwork and outbox Conciso. But I could also see Conciso outworking and outboxing Foster. And for me, I'm picking Robson Conciso to win this fight. The reason being is Oshaki Foster has scared me in the last two performances against Rocky Hernandez and against Abraham Supernova. Now, yes, maybe he was overlooking those two guys. Maybe he's more what we saw against Ray Vargas um, from last year. You know, he also has a win over Muhammad Yakubov, but we don't know how good Yakubov's going to be yet. But Foster is talented, he's solid, but against another chess master. You know, Supernova was kind of that way. Ever had Supernova. But I've, I've seen this boxing ability, this heart that this Brazilian Robson Concise has shown. And I just think he's a, he's a step better based off of who he's fought. I think he's fought the better competition. Don't get me wrong. I love the, the, lit, the last four fights have been good, solid competition for Oshaki Foster. Um, Miguel Roman, the veteran, Mickey Roman, outboxed him, outclassed him. I think Roman was past it, of course, but 
it was a good solid win. Muhammad Yakubov, good solid win. He was undefeated. Um, Ray Vargas, good solid win. Rocky Hernandez, uh, comeback, knockout, showed a lot of heart in that fight. And then Abraham Supernova had to dig deep, put him down to win that fight. But Concisa, I think, is better than all those guys. I really do. And he's also been in a ring with better fighters. Oscar Valdez. Um, he dominated Xavier Martinez, that undefeated contender, on the rise. Lost to Shakur Stevenson, but Shakur Stevenson's a great fighter. And then Mena Navarata, I think, is a really good fighter. And I thought he outworked and outboxed him. But, again, he had a couple knockdowns, to, uh, you know, against him. I think Concisao is just slightly better. I think he's going to beat Foster. I think it's going to be close. I can see, like, a majority decision win. I can see a 115-113 type card. But either way, I think it's going to be a really good fight, a thinking man's fight, and I can't wait to see it. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. This has been the Foster versus Concise Out breakdown and prediction video. This is a true boxing fans fight right here. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. This fight takes place Saturday, July 6th on ESPN. And this is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.